okay how science has helped us is that clear the third topic is <coughs> light pollution <coughs> light pollution and importance of night sky so do you know what is light pollution and since we are an astronomy institute you know how important night sky is for us okay then fourth is space missions from india so all the space missions that india has conducted or are uh, going to conduct in near future we'll have to speak something on them and the last is science and technology for sustainable future okay so there are all these five topics all of you were given these five topics in advance i believe okay so i hope you must have at least done some sort of preparation for all these five topics okay now we said that on the day of the competition you'll be assigned a topic by random chit selection so there will be one topic and on that topic you'll give it two minutes time to just you know collect your thoughts or just uh, you know compose uh, what you want to say but we do not expect you to write a complete speech and read the speech it is a extempore speech competition of course you can write down pr probably a couple of pointers if you want okay and then while speaking you can refer to those pointers but it should not be like reading a written material okay it is an extempore speech is that clear then you are supposed to speak for minimum 2 to maximum 3 minutes okay and when we start from the first one we'll start in such a way that the first speaker will pick up the chit get his or her topic two minutes time will be given and then that person will come here to speak as that person comes here to speak the chit will be given to the second speaker in the list okay so that by the time this person is speaking the other person can compose their thoughts of course it is going to be probably a bit difficult while the person is speaking but we don't want to give it right in the beginning to everyone because the person speaking at last will have an advantage right mm -hmm. so we want everyone to have similar advantages or disadvantages i would say yeah Excuse me. The, do we need to introduce ourselves? If so, yes, yes, I'm I'm coming to that. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I have the list of uh, your names over here. When I call upon your names, at the same time the names will be given to the judges, and will tell your name, your school name, and your grade to the judges. Okay. so they will know whether you are a 12th grade student or a 9th grade student or whatever so while evaluating your speech they will keep in mind whether you are category 1 student that means grade 9 or 10 or you are category 2 student grade 11th and 12th is that okay so i request judges that when you are evaluating you have two different categories okay you have one separate category for uh, category 1 student and you have another one for category 2 student for 9th and 10th is uh, first category so हेलो हाँ सर आपका टाइम लगे नहीं नहीं चालू होने वाला है हाँ हाँ ये करीब चलेगा साढ़े तीन से पाँच चार तक but only one phd is true yes ha so does we cannot expect that my class 9 year class 12 year will be 
Yeah, fine. You can you can bring it, but keep in mind you don't have to you know write your speech. Yeah, it is just some just pointers. Yes, yeah. Just, yeah. But uh, maybe my personal opinion, mm -hmm. like when you speak only two mm -hmm. three minutes, you will be making some four or five points. Those four or five points you can remember also. You need not to write down. Okay. So one person, I want to I will repeat it once again so that it's clear to everyone. For extempore speech, five topics are there. The topics were already announced to you. The first is importance of scientific temper. Second is impact of science during COVID pandemic. Third is light pollution and importance of night sky. Fourth is space missions from India. And fifth is science and technology for sustainable future. So these five topics are there. These five chits are there. When we call upon your name, I will tell your name, your grade and your school name so that the judges know which category you are category one, ninth or 10th student or category two, 11th and 12th. Okay. So <clears throat> with random chit selection, you'll be assigned one topic. You'll have to speak for minimum two minutes maximum three minutes. If you speak for less than two minutes, your points will be deducted. If you go for more than three minutes, we'll stop you. Is that okay? Clear? Because we want to finish everything off. And by speech, it is not a political speech. So we don't want 10, 15 minutes or half an hour. We want your thoughts to be concise and relevant and to the point. Okay. When you draw the chit, after that, you'll have two minutes. The first person will have two minutes to compose their thoughts. If you want, you can just write a couple of points as a reference, okay? In some chit or some paper. And while speaking, you can just maybe refer to those points, but it should not be like you are reading a speech, okay? Or you are just looking at the paper and speaking. It is just sort of as a reference, okay? Then once the first person starts speaking, the chit will go to the second person. By the time first person finishes, the second person will come and speak. Is that clear? So basically, when the first person is speaking, the second person gets that much time to prepare or to collect their thoughts or compose their thoughts, whatever. Clear now? Shall we start? I'll go by this list only. So St. Joseph's name is first. Okay. So judges, is that clear? Two categories. Okay. And while grading, you have to keep in mind what is their grade. So <coughs> total 23 candidates are there. Okay. So first is St. Joseph's College, Shivam Adhikari, grade 12. Yeah. So timekeeping, you have to keep, uh, do, you have to give two minutes to prepare his thought. And then after that, once he starts uh, speaking at two minutes, you have to just show that two minutes are over and then two minutes 45 seconds again you have to tell 
so by 3 they should wind up okay. at 3 you tell them to stop understood yes, sir. and when it comes to uh, start the speech i call the second name to yes I, I will call the second name they will uh, yeah shivam adhikari yes so the chits are here we have to pick up one chit Science, technology for sustainable future. Okay. So, Shivam Adhikari, grade 12. You have two minutes to prepare. Yes, Yes, only one chance. <laughs> Okay, so time starts now. So this is uh, Shivam Adhikari, grade 12. I also request Amar Ahmed, grade 12, to come and choose their topic. Can come here. Okay, you can go and sit. Start. So, will I start with a very short introduction for what Elvin Toffler once wrote in his journal? Going back to the years of the, of the, 20, of the 19th century, you know what he wrote in, in one of his journals? He wrote about the three paradigms, the triple paradigms that today we talk about. Later on in 1971, he talks about them in, our, in his book, The Future Shock of 1971. And those three paradigms are learn, relearn, and then again learn, learn, unlearn, and relearn. And with this, I shall start with my speech. A very good afternoon to honorable judges and to all the, mem and all the members and uh, the one and all present over here in this hall right now. We're talking about technology science. I think over the years, whatever resources we have got from, the, from nature, we all have utilized those. But what exactly are we doing? We are depleting these resources. We are actually just killing the nature. We are not looking towards the scientific means and how we can actually save them. However, we are just looking for those means which can be beneficial for each one of us. Well, let's talk about how can we actually move towards the future and uh, how can we actually uh, go ahead with certain things and ecological balance uh, with modern uh, techniques. We all have cars, we all have buses. How many of you actually go to your school, your uh, colleges, you know, via your uh, separate cars or buses? I think majority of us don't do that. Why? Because we do carpooling, right? We all go with common taxis and buses. We all go together. And that is one advantage that we have over technology. And that is another very important factor. We have to understand the technological things. And with that, we have to make sure that we do not harm the future. Well, going ahead in future would never mean that we just keep on using all the resources that we have today. But in the same manner, we have to even maintain a balance between our environment and make sure that we do not harm it. Another very important factor that we have to even uh, implicate. Okay, 
uh, we have to implicate in our homes is reuse, reuse, and recycle. We have those plastic water bottles. What are we doing with that? You know, new technology and, you know, plastic, we see it everywhere right now. You know, so many things over here in this world itself are made of plastic. And how do we use those plastic water bottles? When we buy a bisleri from, uh, from a supermarket, I think majority of us just use those uh, bisleri water bottles as a source of, you know, water bottles that we carry to our schools. And that is how we are using it. Are we actually sustaining it? Because what we do is when uh, the people coming uh, to take those or collect those cans, those water bottles, they'll reuse it. And that is some way or the other, you know, it is going to harm us, right? So we have to move. I'll, and yeah, okay. And I'll conclude by saying that every step with technology that we are going to take ahead and how we are going to balance from a balance between technology and our day-to-day -day lives, each and every step is going to make a huge difference. Thank you. Okay. So Amar Ahmed, grade 12. The next is Smriti Pandey, grade 12. Please pick up and uh, like. Yeah, yeah, you have to keep the chit here. Okay. So uh, your topic was impact of COVID, the impact, of, impact science. of science during the during COVID, COVID pandemic. pandemic. So he is Amar Ahmed. Amar Ahmed, sorry, grade 12, St. Joseph. Fine. Okay, Impact of science during COVID pandemic. COVID pandemic was a thing that changed our lives and give, gave science a new route and to increase in our lives. It just... Mm, during the COVID pandemic, the vaccine was the main thing that science helped us with to come out of that. Sorry, don't, don't worry. See, this is not an exam. Okay. The main aim of this exercise, exercise was that you read up something which is not in your syllabus. Okay. Maybe if he's nervous, he can be given the next chance or something. Uh, probably may not be feasible considering yeah. the number total number of people. Now, since this is the first example, uh, I mean, uh, let us uh, take him in the very last. And we, okay, we'll, we can, we'll see. Uh, as yeah, we can say that uh, if any such instance is again happening, we will not consider that. So, please, please mentally prepare that you 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 don't need to be nervous. There is no reason for you to be nervous. So, okay, we, we, we'll see uh, depending upon the time uh, that we have at the end. Okay. okay, so her two minutes are not over yet. So we can uh, wait for some more time. No, but wait, wait. We'll wait for some more time. No, it's okay. I'll start. Okay, you want to start? Okay. Yeah, we can uh, restart. Yeah, yeah, sure. Not a problem. So, uh, the student name is just a second before you start. Smriti Pandey, grade 12. I request Vinayak Nath to come up and select his chit. Okay. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait a second. Think like a proton. Be positive. Good afternoon, everybody. Myself, Smriti Pandey from St. Joseph's College, Nenital. And it's a great, great pleasure for me that today on the occasion of National Science Day, I'm able to address you all on my topic, impact of science during COVID pandemic. As we all know that science is really very important because starting our day till the end of our day, science is everywhere. And during the COVID pandemic, firstly, we had seen that the vaccines which were developed were only possible because of science in it. And uh, during COVID, uh, there was a research also done 
that many people uh, were suffering with great deal of depression they were like they were suffering through traumas because of sadness uh, as we all know that during covid pandemic many people lost their jobs many people became shelterless also they were not having anything to eat and the schools were also shut down so people were unable to communicate so there was a research done that during the covid pandemic many people were depressed so through science science has given many many methods through which people can cope up with their depression so science during the covid pandemic is very important as we were wearing the masks and we were using the sanitizers somewhere or the other science was the only reason that we were provided with these precautions and from where this virus came what were the main reasons how can we cure it everything we only came to know because of science the measures that we are taking were also because possible only through science the sanitizers that we've been using somewhere or the other science somewhere or the other not science was the only reason through which we were able to cope up with the virus and uh, the main thing is that we consider or not uh, there's a small quotation that i've written the good, the good thing about science is that the good thing about science is that whether it's true or not we believe it because through science experimentations have been done because of which we have been able to cope up with the virus so i would just like to conclude by saying thank you to all of you for listening my speech and a happy national science day to all of you thank you okay so next vinayak nath and uh, aro bora please come and select your topic Okay. Yeah. So this is Vinayak Nath, Great Twelve. and uh, his topic is space missions from india and your time starts now very good afternoon to everyone present here my name is vinayak nath and i am from punjab college without any further ado i would like to begin india has been always a frontier in space and aeronautics research uh, in total about 111 total space missions have been conducted by india till date and there are many many more planned i think they all began very early with great minds very great minds such as uh, ayavata etc the first i think uh, most ambitious the best achievement by india is the mangalyaan mission as it was the only mission sent to mars without any fail especially failure is also a stepping stone to success and there have been a total of 17 failures by india till date isro is the indian space research organization which was formed in the independence uh, after 1969 which is the frontier research uh, frontier uh, research uh, body from india specifically there have been many launch spacecrafts to moon too i'm not counting the satellites uh, launches but the major important ones were chandrayaan 1 and chandrayaan 2 which have chandrayaan 2 was specifically first failed a few times that's why uh, the third time when it was launched it was considered a great uh, celebration and even we must have seen in the tvs lots of people were giving speeches and politicians were using it as a front to uh, politicize themselves that's why it's, uh, it's important to make sure that you learn from your mistakes other things include the transparency among the government and the organizations uh, by what i mean is the government funding towards the organization is actually pretty well funded compared to other backly driven countries uh, uh, among uh, other asian countries which is not as great as united states or russia but still it is pretty great if i say so myself uh, all the other times that india has tried and uh, the success rate is among the most spectacular in the world uh, thank you so much Okay, Arav Bora. 
and uh, Sumajit, you can come and uh, select your topic. Yes, we've done that. Okay. Yeah. So, you know. So uh, this is R of Bora, grade 12. And his topic was space missions from India. From India. The Indian Space. The Indian Space Research Organization of India was formed on the Independence Day of 1969. The founder was Vikram Sarabhai, one of the two so-called rocket boys of India. The second of which was Homi J. Bhava, both of them great nuclear driving forces of India. The first mission director of the first mission on ISRO was APJ Abdul Kalam, a former president, and he was transferred to the first mission in 1969, the year of ISRO's founding. The first mission was the SLV Mark III. It launched the Rony satellite into orbit in success in 1980. It took 11 years total in development and construction. Israel has launched 114 missions since then. It has two large families of rockets named the PSLV and the GSLV. The PSLV is the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle and the GSLV is the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle. Chandrayaan launched in 2008 on 22nd of October, finished on 29th of August in 2009. The PSLV C-25, which is technically a rocket with very low fuel capacity, actually spearheaded the mission to Mars, which is obviously much farther away than the moon, which was a great achievement for the rocket and made it one of the most popular rockets, which is still used in smaller missions to date. It launched in 2013 and the Chandrayaan vehicle was successfully inserted into Mars orbit in 2014. This made India the first Asian country to enter Mars orbit and the first country in the world to do so in its first try. Chandrayaan 2, a 2019 mission, one of the most popular modern missions of ISRO, it was unfortunately not a complete success. The soft landing part was a bit of a failure because in the end the rover and the landing vehicle malfunctioned because of slight disconnection at the last moment. But the orbiter is still active around the moon, so it wasn't a total failure anyway. The most recent uh, of ISRO missions are the EOS-4, the Earth Orbital Satellite 4, which was launched by the PSLV C-52 an updated version of this PSLV C-25, which launched the Mongolian mission on February 14th of 2022. Before it, there was the Amazonia-1, which was a Brazilian satellite, which was launched by Indian rockets because Brazil requested to do so because it didn't have any rockets of its own. Then there's the Aditya L-1, a pending mission, which is to be released in January, hopefully. And then there is the Gaganyaan, which is another pending mission, which is to be the first manned mission to the moon from India. <laughs> Silence, please. Yeah. They can just as a reference, they can have maybe one or two points, but they are not supposed to read most of their speech from the paper. Yes, so can keep that in. So, uh, uh, along with Simarjeet, I request uh, Manya Rikhal. Is it Manya? Manya, sorry. Please come and select your topic. Okay, so Simajit Singh Anand, grade 12, and his topic is what is the importance of scientific temper. Shall we start? That is. That is okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, first of all, good afternoon to everyone present here. I hope you all are doing good. I am Singh Singhanand from Saint Joseph's College, 
will be giving out a speech on the topic importance of scientific tempo. I would like to start my speech with a very famous quote, which is said by Bertrand Russell. Science may set limits to our knowledge, but it should not set limits to our imagination. Science is not only about why, it's about why not. So, and as we are living in the 21st century, it is important for us to have a scientific temper mind. Like what do we mean by scientific temper mind is that we have to have a critical thinking in science. If we have a critical thinking, we will be going into depth of every possible situation. As the economic condition of a country also depends upon the scientific background it has and it has been developing. According to the recent data, our, India has been the third in the field of science and tech. India is progressively developing a lot in the field of science and technology. We all know the value of science and tech is a, keeps a very great importance in our lifestyle. Whatever we do and whatever we think should be in science. Like, we know that every day the science has made our life so easier and so less stressful by means of use of machineries and all different articles. We have, we have been able to easily consume everything. And in today's modern times, the clean growth of a country can also be imagined with the science. It cannot be imagined without it. So I would like to conclude this here only. I hope you like this. Thank you. Anya? How much time is over? And uh, Paridhi Srivastava. Please keep in mind that you are not supposed to read or by read means it's not like that if you read 90% and you don't read 10% then it's not reading. Okay, you are just supposed to have a couple of bullet points or maybe three bullet points which may just remind you okay what you have planned to see. Okay, not the entire written thing. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, wait. No, no, what was your topic? No, we are not uh, prepared. So, uh, no, wait. Okay, so there is uh, another uh, case where the no, maybe at topic is we consider the same case as that one. So just maybe okay, okay. The, we'll consider you at the at the last. At the end of time, we'll see. Okay. We'll give more time to uh, for me to prepare. Class. Uh -huh. So these are all class nine. Uh, so I think we should have from the friends. Yeah. Yes. Time. Yes. So while judging. No. no. One year is kind of from Yeah. One year is from nine. Class nine. <clears throat> but uh, what I will say. So, two minutes, what? So, now uh, Paridhi Srivastava will be speaking and uh, Darshita Joshi, uh, you'll have to draw the chit for your topic. Wait for a few more seconds. Okay, you can come. Paridhi, you can also come. Okay, so this is uh, Paridhi Srivastava. She's uh, from grade nine, and her topic is importance of scientific temper. Importance of scientific temper, grade nine. And time starts now. Part of scientific temperament is this tolerance for holding multiple theories in mind at the same time. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I am Pariti Shivatsa from Dikshan International School, and today I'm going to present my views on the topic importance of scientific temper. So, what is scientific temper? It refers to the modest, open-minded temper, which welcomes new knowledge and new experiments, whose results may be unfavorable to long-cherished theories. It aims to inculcate values of scientific thinking, appreciate scientific development, and drive away superstitions, religious intolerance, and all forms of pseudoscience. Importance of scientific temper. The fastest uplift of mankind has been possible only by scientific practices. Method of science is not required. Method of science is only important in those areas where we need to think more and we need a rational and logical thinking. India is the only country to adopt scientific temper in its con constitution. And according to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, scientific temper is necessary not only for for the application of science, but also for to get solutions for many problems of human life. And scientific temper is essential for the overall development of the nation. It enables the attitude and which enables the ability of a rational thinking. And scientific temper is the most promising path of India. It is very important for us to discover our fundamental duty towards scientific temper for new inquiry, new reformation. So how to encourage scientific temper amongst youngsters? So they should ask more questions. We should also encourage them to ask more questions. And we should drive away all these superstitions and religious intolerance and what all rubbish is going on all around the world. And according to uh, our Prime Minister, Mr. Narain Modi, scientific temper is the only part to the development. It is the only part to the development by which our citizens can also develop. We have one minute left. And uh, scientific temper also provides a viable method of acquiring knowledge. And we can apply it to many fields, many fields which we cannot think means we can apply or not. So, uh, and at last, I would like to say that, that uh, we should inculcate scientific temper in every student in, in this hall, whoever are present in this hall and all over the world. It is also a topic which is uh, being discussed all around the world. Thank you and have a nice day. This was uh, Paridhi Srivastava, grade 9. Next speaker is Darshita Joshi. She's from grade 11. And I request uh, Anshika Bish to come and select her topic. Anshika? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, this is Darshita Joshi, grade 11, and her topic is Space Missions from India. Many years ago, the British explorer George Mallory was asked, who was about to die, Mount Everest was asked, why did he want to climb it? His answer was simple, because it is there. Well, the space is there, the planets, the moon, the solar system is there, and so we are going to climb it. New hope for learning and knowledge is there. Good afternoon to one and all present here. I'm Dashata Joshi, and today I'm going to speak on the topic, space missions from India. From India's first satellite, which was launched, called Aryabhat, to India's current PSLV mission, which was launched on February 14, 2022. India has come a long way in the field of space, in the field of space science. For a third world country like us, space technology and being able to send probes to space was only a dream. However, it was because of the hard work and the diligent scientists and engineers who put day and night to make this dream a reality. The Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, was for, founded in 1969. And from then, India has sent countless missions to moon and beyond. Some of the major missions sent by India include INSAT-1B satellite, which helped, in, which helped to transfer TV signals all over the country. It also helped in weather forecasting by sending the images that were captured by the satellite. Another important mission was India's first lunar probe 
Chandrayaan-1. With this, India became the fourth country to ever launch a device on the moon's surface, followed by America, China, and Russia. Another important mission that was launched by ISRO was the Mars Orbiter Mission or Mangalyaan. It has been there, it was launched on 2013 and has been there on space for seven years now and has been sending information from Mars to its five scientific instruments. Through, through, the, through the experience gained from Mangalyaan and other previous missions, India is also planning to send various missions in the future. The most important one of them being Gaganyaan, which will have three Indian astronauts and will be India's first ever crewed mission. It is because of the hard work and the diligence of all our scientists that we have been able to make that we have been able to make our dream come true and send so many spacecrafts to space and will continue to do so in the future. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this was uh, Darshita Joshi, right? Darshita. Yeah. So she was grade eleven. Uh, the next speaker is Anshika Bist, grade 11 again. Your topic is? Uh, impact of science and physics. Okay. And I request Ishika Tarakoti to come and uh, pick up the topic. <coughs> impact, impact of, of science. Impact, impact of, of science, science during COVID. Pick up them. So Anshika Bist, grade 11, and the topic is impact of science during COVID. Ralph Waldo once said, bad times have scientific value. These are occasions a good learner would never miss. Good morning to one and all present here. I'm Anshika, a class 11 from Dikshand International School. And today I'll be voicing my opinions on the topic, impact of, co uh, impact of science on the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 took the world by a storm. It shook everyone. And it changed the way we look at the world today. It showed us the importance of a thriving scientific system uh, we have today. The strongest minds quested and found effective solutions with a breakneck speed. In a small time, time constraint, we all found an effective vaccine. The... Uh, The virus uh, originated from Wuhan, China. The information provided by WHO was that it was not a virus which pre-existed. It was a mutant which came from an animal host and uh, now gained its present form. During COVID, we also had the concept of open science practice all throughout uh, by scientists all around the world in which uh, uh, scientists collaborated and each and every information provided was uh, was present all over the web. Um, it is also uh, it also taught uh, our nation how to be pandemic ready. Um, I would like to end by saying that don't tell me that sky is the limit when I see footprints on the moon. Thank you. Thank you. So this was uh, Anshika Bisht, grade 11. Now I invite uh, next one, Ishika Karakuti, Karakuti, sorry, uh, grade 11, sorry, grade 9. This is grade 9, category 1 student. And uh, I request uh, Ritesh to come up and select his topic. Can you repeat the name? Tishika, T-I-S-H-I-K, Karakuti. And uh, the right. topic was uh, okay. So her topic is space missions from India. You believe what you become, and indeed, ISRO has proved it true. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tishika Karakoti. 
I study in class ninth from Dikshant International School. You know, primary objectives of ISRO were, all, were, were always to reach at the top. It was found in 1969 and, and people believed that it would never become successful. But it was never true since ISRO has given us many chances to raise a toast for it. ISRO has, uh, ISRO has launched many missions and it has also created many world records. One of them being the 2017 one in which it launched 104 satellites out of which 101 were foreign satellites. This was a world record and it was under, and unbelievable. Along with it, there were also many missions like Chandrayaan-1, which was launched on 22nd of October, 2008. This was indeed a boost for ISRO. You know, Einstein has, Einstein has said that the most important thing is to never stop questioning. And ISRO did the same. It never ever let other people's opinion to let, uh, to, to let judge itself. ISRO, ISRO had, along with all of these, ISRO had set many other records. And, you know, it has also proved that do not listen to anyone because there are many opportunities waiting for you. And I would also say that along with all these, ISRO is, um, that, that along with all this, ISRO has become, uh, ISRO has become one of the most popular agencies of space, uh, of space. With that, I would like to conclude by saying is that curiosity is there for reason, and you do not, and you should not uh, take it for granted. Thank you. So this was a uh, Tishika Karukoti, grade nine. Uh, grade nine. Uh, next speaker is. Ritesh Ruwali, yes. is that right? Yes. Ritesh Ruwali, he is also from uh, grade nine. And I request uh, Rahil Kanyal to come up and uh, select his topic. Again, this is Ritesh Ruwali, grade nine, and his topic is. So, impact of uh, so impact of COVID-19. His topic is impact of COVID-19, uh, impact of science during COVID-19 pandemic. Your time starts now. Healthcare workers and scientists are the foundation of the global health security. Good afternoon, honorable jury members, respected teachers, and all my fellow contestants. Today, I, Ritesh, from Dikshant International School, stand before you to express my views on the topic, impact of science during the COVID-19 pandemic. The emergence of COVID-19 pandemic has, has taught us that medicine and science are at the top level. None of, uh, we have seen development in clinical care, prevention, and treatment. None of that would have been possible without the tireless work, hard work, and the sheer determination that has been given by our scientists and the healthcare workers. Science and medicines are the two spheres which give remedies for every disease and healthcare devastation. Although there is currently no remedy for COVID-19, but, but science and medicine are the key to success. The healthcare workers and medical professionals have been monitoring, have been monitoring the situation since the starting. That's why they have been give, they give they give us the correct information regarding the prevention, treatment, and all the things of the same kind. And hence, we should not panic and we should cooperate with them and we should listen to all the recommendations given by them. Thank you and have a great day. This was Ritesh Ruwali from grade nine. Uh, I request now Rahil Kanyal of grade 10 
and before he starts his speech i request uh, manas singh uh, sorry i cannot uh, read what you have written okay 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 so manas singh pachai uh, can you pick up your topic okay so this is rahil kanyal grade 10 so category 1 and your topic is science science and technology for sustainable future science and technology for sustainable future okay and a very warm good afternoon to one and all present here today i rahil kanyal the student of longview public school is here to present my views on the given topic science and technology for sustainable future before i start the first question arises that what is the meaning of sustainable future through sustainable future we can understand that everything मानस सिंह पुछाई एंड आई ऑल्सो रिक्वेस्ट कुलदीप फरतियाल टू कम एंड सिलेक्ट द टॉपिक सॉरी या आई मीन देर देर बी सम टाइम so i mean till the time this 2 minutes get over only after that uh, listen you can just uh, come and select your topic tell me in 2 minutes huh? when sir okay manas 2 2 minutes are over so i think you can come now just pick up randomly don't see what is written that's not the <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is manas singh pochai grade 10 so category 1 and your topic is his topic is impact of science during covid 19 pandemic so a warm good afternoon to all the scientists researchers and jury members present here today i manas singh pachai one scholar of uh, longview public school nental is here to present my views uh, on the topic impact of science uh, during covid 19 through my speech so covid 19 with an outbreak on uh, 31st december 2019 scared the whole world there was not a corner was left which was feared with covid 19 everyone was dying everyone was uh, like just getting depressed from covid 19 what is going to happen what will come that uh, will get us free from this virus what will happen in future what were the our generations can occur from this virus which is killing our whole world people so we are a lot of scared so but in uh, one corner of our heart there was one hope and this hope was just lighten up by science 
what is science how science help us uh, during this pandemic to just rise and fight against this pandemic if we um, go to history a lot of uh, pandemic has come and uh, we are um, just fear of them but uh, uh, with the help of science we have just faced them our scientists have um, just make it possible with the help of science that we are stood here we are able to speak here what we will saying what we will say what we will uh, expressing today is whole from our heart it is not just uh, that we have just speaking from the piece of a paper not from the internet website all these are things are being yeah, just expressing from my heart so the when the covid 19 pandemic was sparing a lot of people here so the science help scientists scientists uh, know how this covid 19 is affecting people how covid 19 is killing people how it is like finishing the immunity and just killing people so science studied that about that and based on that theory and based on that information only science has just make the vaccine which is known as covid co vaccine covid shield and many more vaccine just developed with the help of science if there was no science no vaccine can be there and we humans can and we humans cannot survive so science is the only hope to fight against this uh, pandemic and we can just and we can uh, we cannot leave the hope of science and science is just stood in front of us to face all this pandemic to all face all the situations that will come to human civilization with this i would like to conclude that uh, only science can help us to fight from this pandemic thank you this was uh, manasin pochai and uh, i now request kuldeep to come up uh, to give the talk uh, to give his speech and garvit tamta please come and uh, select your topic so this is kuldeep patyal grade 10 to category 1 and your topic is scientific temper importance of scientific temper your science starts good morning good afternoon to one and all present here today on the occasion of national science day i kuldeep patyal of longi public school is here to give away my views on the topic importance of scientific temper the first question that uh, that arises in our mind is that what is scientific temper scientific temper or scientific temperament is referred to an individual attitude of logical and rational thinking an individual is considered to have a scientific temper if he solves any thing with its scientific method or in his day to day life the term was first coined by the our first prime minister jawahar lal nehru in his book the discovery of india scientific temper involves the method of science provides a variable method of acquiring knowledge to solve day to do day to day problems in our life our prime minister sri narendra modi has said that that scientific temper is one of our key feature for the development of our nation the scientific temper can help to has to develop the mental strength of a person and it can helpful to achieve helpful to achieve the nation to a great height
we can implement scientific temper to through our circulum circularism through library work and science club activity etc scientific temper has to to help the people to believe in the science to solve the day to day life problem thank you So this was uh, Kuldeep Patel. Grade, uh, uh, grade 10, so category one student. Now we have uh, Garvit Tamta. He is from grade nine. So again, category one student. And before he starts, I request uh, Mayan Kravat to come and select his topic. Garvit Tamta, grade nine, category one, and uh, your topic is uh, space missions from India. Space missions from India, and uh, your time starts now. So a very warm afternoon to everyone present here. I am Garvit Tamta from class ninth of Longyear Public School, and is here to present my few thoughts on the topic space missions from India. So hey, India is a huge country, right? and this huge country has a huge amount of people and this huge amount of people has done an uncountable number of marvelous works and one of them is the space missions from india currently the total number of space missions that india has carried out is 111 spacecraft missions and 79 launch missions and if i go talking about them it would take a lot of time right so today here i will be talking about from where it all started the aryabhat so around 47 years ago on uh, 19 april 1975 india's first satellite was launched into the space and it was named after a famous astronomer aryabhat and this satellite was prepared whole in india and was launched in the soviet union by a russian made rocket it weighed around 360 kilos and had various instrument for various work but everybody knows that during this period isro had a lot of problems right and one of the most major problem that isro had was the death of vikram sarabhai the founder is the founder of isro and the one who started it all so due to his death this project was put to a standstill and there was a lot of things going around isro then after some time everything in, in, inside the isro resolved and the Dream of Vikram Sarabhai started again with a huge motivation, and the space craft, sorry, the satellite was sent into the space. This was a huge, precious moment for India, and it still is. However, on the fifth day, due to some power problems, the project had to be shut down. And but useful information was collected in the collected in these five days, and. it was a huge success for india it is it inspired us and in my opinion it will still inspire us and we will reach to heights that we have never reached before thank you everyone thank you so this was uh, garvit tamta grade 9 and uh, now i have uh, mayank rawat from grade 10 and i request uh, ojas joshi to come and select the chip no okay so 
importance of scientific temper is his topic a very warm good afternoon to one and all present here today i am mayank rawat on behalf of longview public school is here to deliver a speech on the topic importance of scientific temper so this term was first coined by the pandit jawaharlal nehru in his book discovery of science so so this so the importance of putting forth a society that is free of superstitions and all religious practices we live in a age of we live in a age full of science scent Yes, Joshi. Uh, I request uh, Yoshita Mandal to come and uh, select the topic. Select one. So this is Ojesh Joshi, Grade Ten, so Category One, and uh, his topic is light pollution and importance of night sky. Time starts. Good afternoon, one and all present here. Today, I Ojesh Joshi, a scholar from Longview Public School, Nainital, on the special occasion of National Science Day, is present here to express my views on the topic light pollution. and importance of night sky here i put forward my views well if you ask me that everything that has advantages has its disadvantages also well it is written that light pollution is the presence of unwanted inappropriate or excessive artificial artificial lighting this is according to the google's language but if you ask me that what is the actual meaning behind this i would just translate it that that as i mentioned earlier that everything which has its pros also has its cons so excess of everything is always damaged excess of it if we just uh, excess of anything can always cause damage things should be done at a limit only light pollution means that when excess artificial light when there is a artificial when there is excess light and we instead of preserving the light we waste it then it is known as light pollution an important it can also has various contributing factors to the, towards the nature <coughs> light pollution can also cause various things for example during night sky very many travelers go in search of night sky but like they go to see the star trails but if there will be light pollution so how could they will be able to see it it also refers to the effects of any poorly implemented lighting during the day and night Light pollution can also have very health adverse effects on a human on a human being. Science is not about this doing, but also doing it practically. If we see, 
If we see different forms of pollution, that is air pollution, water pollution, soil, and various, so they are just categorized pollution. We just consider them under the category of negative things. We never, we never judge them under positive things. The same way, light pollution is also considered as a series of negative things. Well, I would like to conclude my speech by saying that excess of anything is always harmful to the human and living organisms around it. Thank you for being a good listener. So, <clears throat> this was uh, Ojas Joshi, grade 10. And uh, now I have uh, Yoshita Manral from grade 12, so category 2, to speak on the topic. And uh, before I announce the topic, the next uh, speaker, Karishma Bisht, please come and select your topic. Okay. 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 So, space mission is coming. Space mission Okay. So, Yoshita Manral, grade 12. And uh, your topic is? Science and technology for sustainable future. Science and technology for sustainable future. And your time starts. Good morning to one and all present over here. Today, Yoshita Manral is standing in front of you to say a few words on the topic science and technology for sustainable future. The coronavirus pandemic shaped the year in research from vaccines and treatments to campus shutdowns and virtual meetings. But in whole, the thing that plays an important role is science and technology. The science and technology plays an important role in sustainable future. As we all know that India is switching up to the sustainable future by using windmills, solar panels, etc. The meeting which is held in Glasgow, Scotland, in which PM Modi said that from 2017, we will all switch up to the net zero emissions. And in from 2023, we will be 50, we will switch to 50% in sustainable development and renewable energy resources and windmills, etc., which will help us to bring such things. So in this to come this to overcome this non-sustainable things, we should have to use science and technology. The science and technology will help us to do the sustainable things. Now, science and technology is also helps us to find out the problems of various economical and other environmental changes things. Now I would like to conclude my words by saying that. Science is a way of life in terms of both thinking and acting. So tackle your problem with a robust way. Thank you. Okay, uh, Harshita Silwal. So this is uh, Karishma Bisht from grade 12 and her topic is Space Missions from India. Time starts. Science is a term we use to define a method, how to define a method, how to use our curiosity. Good afternoon to one and all present over here. I am Karishma from Jawar Naudhi Vidhyalaya, Nantar. Today I'm standing here to present my views on the topic space mission from India. Whenever we think about space, the organization which comes up to, in my mind as an Indian is ISRO. Now we will know a bit for which ISRO stands. In, ISRO stands for Indian Space Research Organization. It was established in 1969. Now let us discuss few uh, a few missions which was taken by ISRO. Number first, I would like to talk about Aryabhatta. Aryabhatta spacecraft was the first mission which was launched by India. It was launched on 19 April 1975. It was fully complete uh, designed in India 
and it was launched by Soviet cosmos CM rocket. Now I would like to talk about India's first interplanetary mission. Do you know which it was? It was MOM. Here MOM stands for Mars Orbital Mission. It was launched on it was launched on 5 November uh, 2013. This was the big achievement for India. ISRO, the scientists of ISRO are working on several missions and missions on the space. Because of MOS, uh, because of MOM, we were the uh, we made, ISRO was made the fourth organization which was to enter Mars orbital. Now let us talk about great achieve, recent great achievements of ISRO. That was PSLV C fifty one Amazonia US three US three and US three and many more, which took place recently uh, in two thousand twenty one and two thousand twenty two. There are many missions which are going on, and the scientists are working on on it. Till now, ISRO has launched uh, launched seventy nine mi missions on uh, missions and one hundred one spacecrafts, and yet they are working on many missions like Gaganyaan and Aditya. At last, I would like to conclude my words by saying we should use. We should use science to develop our curiosity and ideas, not not to destroy the humanity and the nature. Thank you. Next speaker is Harshita Chilwal, Grade Twelve, Category Two, and I also request uh, Shalini Rawat to come up and select the topic. So Harshita Chilwal, Grade Twelve, Importance and your topic is Importance of Scientific Temper. Importance of Scientific Temper. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you all. I am Harshita Chilwal of Class Twelve from JNU Nainital. I have my topic of importance of scientific temper. So here I begin. The term scientific temper was first coined by the first prime minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, in his book, The Discovery of India. According to him, scientific temper is attitude to search for new bodies of knowledge, not to accept anything but truth. Scientific temper is a state of mind which does not, does not accept anything but belief or truth. Logically and rationally, scientific temper is the application of scientific method in our everyday life, which includes questioning, curious observation, physical reality, testing, analyzing, and communicating. So we can say that scientific temper is an attitude which involves application of logic, discussing arguments, and analyzing are the vital pa part of scientific temper. According to the Article 51A, subsection H, says that it shall be the duty of every citizen to develop the scientific temper, humanism, and spirit of inquiry and reform. It aims to inculcate the value of scientific thinking, appreciate scientific development, and drive away superstitious and all form of pseudoscience. The importance of scientific campus are self learning and self effort, has to, has to solve day to day problems, has to Discipline of mind to develop rational attitude, and there are several barriers for scientific temper that are lack of education, peer group, superstitious belief, and cultural practice. That's all from my side. Thank you. So, next speaker is Shalini. Shalini Rawat, she is also from grade 12, category 2. And uh, I request uh, Yashoda Bangari to 
come and select the checkbox. So, Shalini Rawat, grade 12, category 2, and your topic is Science and Technology for Sustainable Science Future. and Technology for, for sustainable, sustainable Future. future. Good afternoon to one of present over here. My name is Shali Yavad. I'm from class 12. And my school name is Jawahar Navodhi Vidyalaya Nanikal. My topic is science and technology for sustainable development. So first I want to say that uh, the main theme of 2022 is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable uh, for sustainable development. So sustainable, what is, it, uh, what is the meaning of the term sustainable? Sustainable means involving the use of natural product, products and energy in such a way that it doesn't harm our environment. So in our daily life, we do many such uh, things that uh, just like uh, say I say casually that uh, when, whenever we go to school or we have to meet our friends for a party or a normal occasion, we normally travel to uh, our personal car. We say to our dad that, uh, dad, I have to go there. So can you please drop me? So only for one person, sometimes we uh, use our uh, vehicles and uh, day by day increase the level of CO2 exhaustion. So this is um, the way of, uh, so we have to keep our mind uh, somewhere in the corner of our mind that uh, thought that we have to reduce. Nowadays we are coming, uh, nowadays we are using many technologies, we can use many technologies uh, and in the case of sustainable uh, approach like uh, use of windmills and solar panels so we can uh, save our environment so we must keep uh, somewhere in the corner of our mind the thought of uh, protecting our environment as well as uh, for as well as So science and technology plays an important role in sustainable future. It helps us to see today's social, uh, economic and environmental changes and attain a sustainable development, boosting the science and technology. Boosting the science and technology help us to boost our society and uh, sustainable development. Uh, now the last speaker. So this was uh, Shalini Rawat, class 12. class 12. And now we have the last speaker, Yashoda Bangari, class 12 again. And your topic is science and technology for sustainable future. Again, science and technology for sustainable future. First of all, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, this is Yashoda Bangari from Jawahar Navodhi Vidyalaya Nantal and my topic is science and technology for sustainable future. So I want to say that the role of technology in sustainable development to fight against the challenges posed by man-made climate change is truly important at this stage. Today, technology has pro pro progressed by legs and bounds in all fields. Countries around the world are building models of uh, sustainable growth based on the assumption that technology can help them create a new or uh, alternate sources to the sources to the resources that are depleting um, and the question is uh, what is sustainable so sustainable means uh, to use the uh, resources in such a way that we can save our resources for future generations uh, and research, research is the key to finding the ways to uh, science and technology to fulfill the need for sustainable development. Um, I want to say that educating yourself with the latest developments in sustainable science uh, is a good place to start. Sustainability also improves the quality of our lives, protects our ecosystems, and preserves natural resources for future generations. Uh, at last, I want to conclude my words by saying that just believe in science. Uh, do not believe in uh, superstitious 
myth and uh, irrational practices. Thank you. So uh, we have already over time and we had, I think, one, two, how many passes? I think three or four uh, people have uh, passed the opportunity. Any one of you would like to speak again? And I'm requesting uh, the judges, will you permit them to speak again? We are already over time. So no, I think the one only one case is a genuine one. Like she before starting, she told that she, she is not able to speak. Okay, fine. Yeah, so I mean, we'll consider uh, only one case. case. Could be like the, sentence, the first one, send the first one because you were the first. Okay, okay so, so we'll consider two. Okay, okay. 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 we'll consider only two. Did wrong. Okay, then yeah. that was not accepted. Okay, yeah. So again, I think both of them come together. Yeah. Take the slip and, and don't give time at all. Yeah, yeah. They have to yeah. just select and speak. Yes. Right. Is that okay? Picking up and immediately you'll have to speak. So you you can sit then. Let, let her pick up and speak, then you can come. No, I think it's sometime. One minute? Yeah. One minute will give. Yeah, give one minute. So impo important or scientific time. Is that okay? Sit. One minute. One more time is given to you. <laughs> no, you choose this one, right? So no. Yeah. Say again, sir. So, let's okay. So, uh, just repeat your name. So, Manya Rithal. Importance of scientific temper. Manya Rithal. Importance of scientific temper. Good afternoon. Great night. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Manya Rithal. I am the student of class 9th day. On the behalf of Dikshant International School, I am going to speak about the importance of scientific temper. The good thing about the science is that it is true, whether or not you believe in it. The scientific temper is referred to the logical and the rational thinking level. An individual is said to be have a scientific temper when he and she have a logical and rational thinking level in their day-to-day -day life. The scientific temper is a word which is coined by the first Prime Minister of India, the Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, in his book, The Discovery of India, in 1946. The Article 51 of our Constitution, which deal with the fundamental duties, stated that we have a right to develop our scientific temper. The aim of science education is that to develop our scientific temper as well as our scientific attitude. Over the population of 1.34 billion, <laughs> billions and of the 40, uh, 41 41% below the 18 years old, it is important that the parents and the educationists taught the children how to think scientifically. The importance of scientific temper is that the first thing is that it developed the society in all the sphere, in the political, in the economical and in the social. Second thing is that the scientific, second thing is that the scientific temper removed the super situations and the irrational practices from the society. Third thing is that it tolerates the people of the different thoughts. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. So your name? Amar Ahmed. Amar Ahmed. Okay. Please pick up one. So, Amar Ahmed, grade 12, and the topic is light pollution and importance of night sky. We'll give you just a few more seconds to prepare. No, no, here, here, here. Stay here. You're not supposed to go back in here. Just keep thinking. Keep thinking two seconds. Light pollution and importance of night sky. Thank you. 
So pollution. Pollution is a thing that always takes us back. It is a very big threat to us. And light pollution. Light pollution is a breaking thing. No problem. Yes. Okay. No problem. Yeah, one thing we would like to say that uh, I mean, here teachers and principals are also sitting along with judges. So, four or five such cases were there. So, Amar was the very first case because you were yeah. nobody. Yeah. So, that's how you were given a chance and you see the second as well. And that girl who kind of clearly said that, I mean, she is not ready for that particular topic. So, all of them we are not calling and be justified in the sense. That they started and they then, yeah. uh, you know, somewhere halfway or one third they got stuck. So I think all guardians and teachers agree with you, right? Okay, very nice. Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll give some time uh, to the judges uh, yeah. to consult uh, among themselves uh, outside. And uh, so, see, the main aim of this exercise, please, please, may I have your attention? The main aim of this exercise, and similarly, we had other competitions, uh, even for slightly younger kids, class six to eight slogan writing, and then we had this science video making competition also, in which some of your friends have participated about uh, you know uh, making videos of some experiments that you are doing and explaining that or explaining some concepts in astronomy and astrophysics, any concept of your own choosing. The main aim behind all these competitions not to award something, not to fill up some sort of quota of prizes or you know certificates that we have to give. The aim was just so that you read up something on your own. You take the initiative and you read up something new. See, all these things are readily available on internet. And I tried to choose the topics in such a way that all these topics are very relevant to the times we are in and the place you are visiting. So that's why importance of scientific temper. This is a National Science Day, right? And it's the most important thing as a society for us, for our future. Second was was uh, space missions from India. I mean, we all know like how important satellites and space missions are for research. Even uh, people uh, from here they use data from uh, various space missions. Uh, very near future, you'll hear about another satellite. In fact, in, in papers you might have read about this. Aditya space mission, which is supposed to study the sun and it will be launched uh, uh, in the later part of this year. Similarly, impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, and uh, sorry, impact of science during the COVID-19 pandemic. And some people very nicely mentioned that uh, impact, importance of vaccines, how the vaccines were developed, how masks were developed, so all and uh, how sanitizers and all these things were developed. So the aim was, you know, Okay, we are facing a pandemic, but how are we tackling that? Not by superstition. Okay, not by blind beliefs. Science and the technology that has come up from science that is helping us. Okay, so <clears throat> then uh, you are visiting an institute where optical astronomy is done. So that was probably uh, one thing where you could have you know immediately started from that light pollution is badly affecting the optical astronomy okay and why the, it is important to you know preserve the night sky not only that i mean you know having this uh, uh, in presence of being in presence of artificial light particularly uh, the led lights the blue lights for a longer and longer duration it is affecting our sleep patterns it is not useful for us as a human beings, it is also affecting animals. Many of the uh, you know usual patterns of birds, like the time which they uh, spend uh, you know flying around or uh, feeding, and the time uh, they spend for resting, that is also changing. So these kind of things are harmful. So that's why it is important that we tackle light pollution. Of course, as we develop. We are going to use up more electricity. You know, earlier in the whole household, probably there was one bulb. Now, one room will have five different kind of bulbs. Okay. Similarly, if you have roads, so you'll have street lights. But what kind of street lights are you having? 
are you having these globular kind of uh, kind of uh, street lights which are not at all covered which you know scatter light even or uh, sends out light even uh, above or are you having proper street lights which are covered from the top so that the light that you get it's only uh, lighting up the street or the road okay and not affecting i mean it's not possible that it will be completely eliminated but you can make some compromises you can try to minimize it right so these this was uh, our uh, main aim behind having these competitions so <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that so we uh, had two in person competition one uh, which you see today and on 23rd we had uh, this uh, slogan writing competition then in addition to that we had uh, online painting competition for uh, class 1 uh, to uh class 5 we got uh, so many responses that uh, i mean it was nearly three times of what we had expected so the evaluation also uh, took uh, quite a bit of long time so uh, i mean this is something what probably uh, you know we should be learning from younger kids i am not only talking about uh, you i am including even adults like us so of course for them it is uh, painting and young kids always enjoy painting so obviously many more will uh, you know uh, get ready to participate in some sort of competition but the thing was that they also enjoy that process okay so the kind of competitions that uh, we tried to organize in fact uh, on the slogan uh, writing competition we had planned that okay we'll give them five themes but the end of the five themes some students were demanding no no you continue and you give us more even though on that day they were not given themes beforehand of course it is just to write a slogan they had but they had to think on the spot and write and they were just given 2 uh, minutes to think and uh, uh, nearly 2 minutes to write that's it so the point is that uh, you don't have to just take it like that it is a competition and you have to win or you know you have to make a name see all those things are secondary aspect if they come fine if it doesn't come it is not the end of world okay by passing off uh, your opportunity you have not lost something over here i try to i want to emphasize that it's fine if you are not able to speak probably you were not that much prepared or probably the topic was not of your liking fine it is not the end of the world right you came here you heard your friends you saw the scientist speak you got the opportunity to visit the telescopes you got to see the sun spots areas where the temperature on sun is lesser and they appear dark okay so all in all would you say it was a good day or not yes sir. yes so that was our uh, main exercise uh, behind these activities so we'll take some time to compile uh, the results and uh, we are already probably around half an hour uh, late so uh, we'll try to wrap it uh, wrap it up as soon as possible until the time the results are compiled uh, i request uh, this uh, the school jawahar navodaya vidyalaya who is visiting us uh, under uh, this vigyan jyoti program they have planned uh, some uh, interesting things for us they have even brought up harmonium so we are going to have even a musical performance on uh, science day and before uh, yeah before i invite uh, jawahar navodaya vidyalaya i would also like to now switch over to hindi because hame hamare yahan par aaj hindi medium ke students bhi hain aur ye bahut aise lagta hai ki agar aap english medium se padhe ho to aapko aise lagega ki agar aap hindi ke scientific terms sunenge to are ye kitna mushkil hai wahi cheez hindi medium se padhne pe hoti hai main khud ek hindi medium school se tha aur maine jab 11th standard mein jab pura sab kuch english mein switch over ho gaya to sab kuch mere bhi sir ke upar se ja raha tha aur mujhe bhi kuch samajh mein nahi aa raha tha सो so, आज के दिन काफी कुछ हद तक हो सकता है ऐसा हुआ हो लेकिन मैंने कोशिश की कि एटलीस्ट जब हम टेलीस्कोप का टूर कर रहे हो तो उस टाइम पे मैंने आप लोगों से हिंदी में बात की सो so दैट ये चीजें आप लोगों को भी समझ में आए और इसी तरीके से ये जो हमने बाकी कंपटीशन की हैं पर्टिकुलरली आज की कॉम्पिटिशन जिसमें एक्सटेम्पोज स्पीच की कॉम्पिटिशन थी जिसमें तुरंत आकर एक किसी टॉपिक के ऊपर एक विषय के ऊपर उनको दो से तीन मिनट बोलना था तो इसमें हमने ऐसे विषयों को चुना था 
जो आज के समय के हिसाब से महत्वपूर्ण है तो भारत से जो भी अंतरिक्ष के मिशन लॉन्च किए जाएंगे या किए गए हैं आप लोगों ने चंद्रयान मंगलयान ये सबका नाम सुना ही होगा इसी तरीके से बाकी के दूसरे टॉपिक जैसे लाइट पोल्यूशन तो प्रकाश से भी प्रदूषण हो सकता है तो ये एस्ट्रोनॉमी इंस्टीट्यूट है जहां पर हम खगोल विज्ञान की रिसर्च करते हैं खगोल विज्ञान का शोध करते हैं और जैसे मैंने टेलीस्कोप के बारे में बताया आपको वहां पे कि जो डोम लगा हुआ है वो आसपास की लाइट को कम से कम रखने के लिए है तो ये जो लाइट पोल्यूशन वाला विषय था ये उसी से रेलिवेंट था कि हमें इन चीजों को कम से कम रखना है अगर आप इसको एकदम अनकंट्रोल तरीके से रखेंगे ये जरूरत से ज्यादा बढ़ेगा तो आप एक तरीके से बिजली तो वेस्ट कर ही रहे हैं उसके अलावा जहां पर एस्ट्रोनॉमी हो रही है जैसे हमारे इंस्टीट्यूट के केस में या और भी भारत में जो और रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट्स हैं जहां पर एस्ट्रोनॉमी में शोध होता है उनके लिए भी आप आ, आ, मुश्किल खड़ी कर दे रहे हैं लाइट पोल्यूशन की वजह से और साथ ही साथ जैसे मैंने ऑलरेडी अभी थोड़ी देर पहले ही कहा कि जो मानव जीवन का जो सुचारू रूप से चलने के लिए जो हमारा आ, सोने का जागने का जो भी साइकिल है जो भी एक चौबीस घंटे का चक्र है हम उसको कहीं ना कहीं बाधित कर रहे हैं या उसको परिवर्तित कर रहे हैं और ये सिर्फ हमारे साथ में नहीं हो रहा ये जानवरों के साथ में भी हो रहा है इसी तरीके से और एक विषय था कि विज्ञान ने हमें ये जो कोविड पैंडमिक चल रही है कोविड महामारी चल रही है उसमें कैसे हमारी मदद की तो टीके के बारे में आप लोगों को पता ही है ये हमें विज्ञान से मिला है जो मास्क आप लोगों ने सुना होगा या न्यूज में पढ़ा होगा कि पहले हमारे यहाँ पे मास्क बहुत कम बनते थे ये एन मास्क जो हम कहते हैं जो अच्छे क्वालिटी के मास्क ये सब ज्यादातर या तो इम्पोर्ट किए जाते थे या तो बहुत ही कम मात्रा में बनते थे लेकिन कुछ ही महीनों के अंदर जब ये समझ में आ गया कि मास्क क्यों इंपॉर्टेंट है और मास्क कैसे काम करता है मतलब हवा में इस विषाणु का वायरस इस विषाणु इस विषाणु का कैसे ये फैलता है कैसे एक जगह से दूसरी जगह जाता है या अगर किसी एक व्यक्ति को है तो सांस के द्वारा या बोलने के द्वारा ये कैसे किसी और को भी हो सकता है तो इसको कम से कम रखने के लिए सबसे आसान तरीका जो था वो था मास्क अगर सभी लोग इसका अच्छी तरह से पालन करते तो शायद हमने जो कोविड महामारी जिस तरीके से झेली शायद उससे जो परिस्थिति थी वो उससे कहीं और बेटर होती और अच्छी होती पूरी तरीके से खत्म नहीं हो सकती लेकिन आपने जैसे मार्केट वगैरह में भी टहलते हुए देखा होगा लोगों को जब कोविड महामारी बहुत ज्यादा थी तब भी आप लोगों ने कई लोगों को देखा होगा जो ऐसे या एकदम ऐसे नाक बाहर निकालकर ऐसे भी चलते हुए आप लोगों ने देखा होगा करेक्ट तो ये और इसके बारे में साइंटिफिक टेम्पर एक और टॉपिक जिसका मतलब है वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोण तो हम हमारे रोजमर्रा के जीवन में हम ये वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोण कैसे लेकर आ सकते हैं आपको अगर कोई कहेगा कि नहीं 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 ये काम मत करो तो आपके मन में सबसे पहले क्या प्रश्न आना चाहिए क्या सवाल आना चाहिए क्यों मत करो क्यों मत करो क्या कारण है उसका ठीक है या अगर आपने किया तो उसका क्या प्रभाव होने वाला है अच्छा बुरा जो भी हो अगर अच्छा है तो ऑब्वियसली आप करेंगे खराब होगा तो आप नहीं करेंगे ठीक है तो इसके बारे में मतलब आपने बहुत सारी चीजें सुनी होंगी मतलब तरह तरह के अंधविश्वास सुने होंगे लोग कहेंगे कि नहीं हम हाथ देखकर आपका कुछ बता देंगे कोई बोलेंगे कि नहीं हम आपकी कुंडली देखकर ये बता देंगे ये इस तरह की चीज तो इस एक्सरसाइज ये जो हमने आपको टॉपिक्स दिए थे इसका जो हमारे उद्देश्य था इसके पीछे वो यही था कि आप लोग जाएं और आपके जो स्कूल की किताबों में जो सब लिखा हुआ है आपके विषय से आपके एग्जाम्स में जो आने वाला है उसको छोड़कर भी आप कुछ पढ़ें जो इन टॉपिक्स से और जो मॉडर्न सोसाइटी में या आजकल के समय पे जो चल रहा है उसके बारे में थोड़ा आप और जान सके लेकिन जहां आपको खुद थोड़ा सा इनिशिएटिव डालना पड़े खुद से थोड़ी सी पहल करनी पड़े ठीक है ओके तो मैं अब जवाहर नवोदय विद्यालय के टीचर्स और स्टूडेंट्स को कहूंगा कि वो जो अपना कार्यक्रम पेश करना चाहते थे वो पेश कर सकते हैं
अब यहाँ पर आइए अपना नाम बताइए सो दैट हमें पता हो कि आप लोगों ने जो भी प्रेजेंट किया है तो किसने प्रेजेंट किया है आइए आइए तो हम आपके सामने यहाँ पे एक विज्ञान ज्योति एक स्कॉलरशिप होती है तो उसके लिए हम यहाँ पे उसके थ्रू आए हैं तो उस इस इसको हम विज्ञान चालीसा बोलते हैं हमने ढूंढा है तो इसमें फोर्टी साइंटिस्ट इवन फोर्टी प्लस साइंटिस्ट और उनके डिस्कवरीज के बारे में है ये और ये इसको एक चालीस का रूप में किसी ने लिखा है तो वो हम आपके सामने रिप्रेजेंट करना चाहते हैं तो आपका कॉपरेशन चाहिए होगा थैंक यू पर 
चुंबक से विद्युत आई और सैन्य की कमाई ओम नियम की कथा सुहाती Thank you. 
Okay, so before we start, Okay, so coming to the announcement of uh, prizes, there were uh, so many entries, please, quite please, that uh, we have not been able to finish the entire uh, prize announcement completely in the sense that we are still making uh, a lot of uh, the certificates and uh, getting the prizes and many of these competitions were in online mode. So the students anyway had participated uh, by sending their entries uh, through their school teachers and in some cases uh, from parents as well. So uh, here we are just going to announce and we are going to show you some of the works. So uh, starting from the lowest class that uh, the online painting competition, which was for uh, class one to uh, five and <coughs> We had <clears throat> three themes in that. Just a second. So the themes were saving our environment. The second was solar system or your favorite planet. And the third was your favorite cartoon character in space. So they had to choose any one uh, topic and they had to do the painting and submit it. And since these were young kids, so we had also requested the teachers and in the some, some cases parents to explain what the themes mean. And uh, we were happy with uh, the entries we got. We were expecting somewhere around uh, 40 entries or so. We got total 129, if I believe. So it took, it took uh, quite a bit of time, uh, but uh, you can see here, I will just move this. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is the first entry or rather the first prize winning entry. And uh, so this is a uh, Vedashri Walimbe. She's class four student from St. Joseph Central School, Vijayanagar, Mysore. So you can see that we got submissions from many, many different. <laughs> the second is Panvi Gupta. She's class four student from MIT International School, 
सेक्टर वन वसुंधरा देन दिस इज बाय क्लास वन स्टूडेंट मृगांखी पॉल हु इज स्टूडेंट ऑफ एम टी इंटरनेशनल स्कूल सेक्टर वन वसुंधरा in that uh, mit has a uh, lot many budding artists in their arsenal and uh, there were some honorable mentions as well uh, i have some of them uh, with me uh, i'll show you some of those these are in no particular order they are just honorable mentions and uh, we can see yeah this is a class 5th uh, student <laughs> and uh, some of these students are also from schools in haldwani and uh, nearby schools as well as uh, you know schools all around the country unfortunately i don't have uh, the school name uh, written with me right now this is another one honorable mention of sola system so here this is not just a painting but the student has also given a 3d effect by painting different colored uh, balls or clay balls probably and you can see that you know the student has nicely uh, labeled all the planets he is from which district from which district yes I, i believe so yes yes yeah so dis in this kind of matter i think this this is also dis so probably i think this is also yes, diksham yes, okay Could you go back to the previous yeah. We'll be sharing all these paintings and the prize-winning details on our social media channels, as well as the web page uh, on our website where uh, where we had listed all the um, all the competitions. Then uh, this is another one from Longview Public School. Honorable mention, Shivanshu Bis. in to our uh, environment oh okay okay probably uh, a mistake was made uh, while writing the name sorry about that yeah she wants this this is uh, another uh, <clears throat> another honorable mention so this was uh, obviously on the theme your favorite cartoon character in space this is another one they want to be from the public school uh, i'll have to uh, again uh, check for the name whether it's devansh or devanshi because i see here it's devansh okay, okay so longview public school again and uh, this is the last uh, honorable mention Yashwini Rawat. This is again from Diksha. So we can see that you know how the concept of slipping away the time has been included. That we don't have much time to you know act uh, uh, upon the issues that we are facing as far as climate change and things like that are concerned. so this was uh, one competition and uh, yeah so the second competition was the slogan writing competition and here we had initially given them five things but as i said initially or earlier that some of the students were so happy uh, you know while participating uh, in the competition that they requested that can we get more so after consulting everyone uh, we decided that we'll have one more and we'll consider best of five like each of them had to write six slogans and the best five out of those six will select so uh, <coughs> there uh, the themes uh, were different on the spot the topics were chosen
so that subject these were given on the spot and they just had a couple of uh, minutes to write whatever slogan they had thought of so first was uh, education during covid the second was science in society third was benefits of technology fourth was earth for future fifth was stop the pollution and sixth was isro for india so they had to write a slogan of maximum 10 words and uh, i'm just going to announce the results so unfortunately being exams and all that and uh, this being younger kids so in this competition uh, not many people could participate uh, we had i think uh, 12 entries so the first in this is from dikshant international school asmi mahajan class 6 The second prize goes to Ayushman Pachaulia, Longview Public School, Class A. And the third prize uh, goes to Arundhati Tiwari, Class Six, Dikshant International. okay so <clears throat> next so next i am going to come to the extempo speech <coughs> so uh, we had uh, two categories in this first category class uh, 9 and 10 and second category class 11th and 12th and uh, in this the students from one school seem to have done better than others okay as far as the number of prizes one is concerned but keep in mind that beyond you know while initially just uh, introducing the first student after that i did not take the name of the uh, school i just mentioned their name of course the judges could see you in your uniforms but while evaluating they did not take into account whether you belong from one school or five different school or if you belong to any specific school okay and see one more thing i would like to sorry yeah sure add that uh, you know extempo you are a student by definition uh, extempo <coughs> means uh, you are supposed to speak on your own and at the spot with the given circumstances and uh, limitations and time uh, if you are uh, coming here and that and start reading a piece of paper that simply disqualifies So at least I was very critical about it, and other two two judges and teachers and honourable principal and all others sitting in this audience will agree to me on this. So uh, keeping that cut off and filter, if you will see the result, then uh, you might feel it as a justified one. We have tried our best. Okay. so uh, starting with category 1 that is class 1 uh, sorry class 9 and 10 category 1 we have a uh, tishika arapati the third prize goes to tishika second prize in category 1 goes to uh, ritesh ruwali in section and the first prize in category 1 goes to paridhi shivasta again section now <clears throat> Uh, 
coming to category two, that is class uh, 11th and 12th student. So starting from the third prize, I have uh, Shivam Adhikari, St. Joseph's College. Second prize goes to Smriti Pandey. Again, St. Joseph. And the first prize goes to Darshita Joshi from Dishan. So this is uh, as far as uh, example speech competition is concerned. Since the competition just got over and uh, we got the results just now. So the certificates uh, are still being made. What I'll do and since anyway for other online competitions, I have to send the certificates. So all the certificates and prizes will be sending you to your school. Is that okay? In a few days. Then uh, we also had the uh, science video making competition. In this, uh, we had hoped to have uh, in two categories, similar to extempore speech, but unfortunately uh, we got lesser number of entries. So we decided to combine uh, them uh, into one. And uh, let me just see if I have the name of the schools here. Yeah, so the third prize in science video making, online science video making competition goes to Tushar Pandey, class 10, Dikshant International. The second prize goes to Karthik Tiwari. Class 10, Longview Public School. The first prize goes to Aishman Tripathi, Class 10, from Nirmala Convent near Secondary School, Hajwan. And uh, this was the only entry from Nirmala, like we, which we, we could get in our any of our competitions. Okay. <clears throat> So this brings us to the end of the competitions uh, for uh, the students. In addition to this, we also had an astrophotography competition for uh, general public in, in that, uh, that anyone could participate in it. But uh, I mean, we have the evaluations, but the evaluations arrived uh, just in the afternoon. So I have not been able to tally the final uh, final results, but what I'll do is I'll just show you some of the entries. So that, and I am in no way saying that these are prize winning one or not. We'll do that once we, uh, once I tally the results. So this thing is known as a star trail. Okay, basically you keep the cameras open and <coughs> you see, yeah. Yeah. you see stars, you know, making an arc as the earth rotates and the smallest one over here, that is the pole star because that just off the pole. So it doesn't make a very large curve. It just makes a very, very small curve. So another uh, entry. There's a Milky Way, North South band. You might have read in your classes that we can see part of our Milky Way. Then yeah. this is another one entry. This is a shot from Spiti Valley in Himachal. And you can see how the photographer has composed uh, the photo. 
I am just showing you some of the entries at uh, random. <clears throat> In December, there was a comet uh, which was just beyond the uh, naked eye visibility limit, and uh, this photograph shows that comet. And on top here, uh, you have something known as a globular cluster, M three. So this uh, basically is a, you can say, a very rare or very chance or by coincidence, this uh, alignment was there, and the photographer could capture it. That. Uh, this comet, and then you have this uh, globular cluster. This is uh, again another Milky Way. Uh, I think this is someone from Aries because we could uh, see this familiar structure over here from the campus. Okay, and let's skip this one. Okay, let's skip this one. This again is a very interesting uh, entry in the sense that. This image was taken uh, from Nenital, but uh, do you know what this is? Anyone? Hmm? No, 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 no. Someone said rocket. Did you hear about uh, this? Uh, the launch of James Webb Space Telescope. Yes. This is that. So although, I mean, uh, as compared to some of the entries, it might pale in comparison as far as uh, the quality of photo in itself is concerned or, you know, how artistic or how good it appears, but just the understanding of what you have captured, that is a big thing. I mean, it was a, so it was launched from Florida and then, you know, as it moved, uh, it, as it went higher and higher up uh, in our atmosphere and probably even slightly beyond the atmosphere, what we consider, say, considering the lowest 100 kilometer or so, probably it might have been even uh, about that by then. But because of the rotation of the Earth and because the way it is launched, by that time this photo was taken, it was uh, over the southern part of India, or probably just south of that. So it was still visible from here. And in fact, quite many people had captured it. Okay, this is another <coughs> one good entry. So this is uh, the nearest galaxy of our own galaxy, which is not a satellite galaxy. So this is an independent, nearest independent galaxy known as Andromeda. And if you go to a very dark sky, very clear sky, and if you know where to look at, this is the farthest object that you can see from your naked eyes. Of course, you know you should know where to look at because it will be extremely faint. But this galaxy is around 2.2 million light years away. That means it takes 22 lakh years for the light to reach us. Like if we see today, that light had started 2.2 million years ago. 22 lakh years ago, that galaxy se wo light nikli. Karib 20 lakh years ago, around 2 million years ago. Humans or chimpanzees ke purvaj, ancestor, ek the. So, jo wo light hum us galaxy se dekh rahe wo tab nikli thi, jab humans or chimpanzees ke ancestors bhi ek the. This structure, uh, some of you may have seen, 40-inch building, and the Milky Way above that. So probably this is another entry from Aries. Mm -hmm. 
this again one nebulous region basically regions where stars are formed you see a lot of dusty features you saw some spots in the morning right yes this is accumulation a combined image of sunspots over 200 days and how you know sunspots so sunspots are not stationary features they disappear after some time they change in appearance and they also drift to lower and lower latitude so from here they come like this as uh, time passes so uh, this is another milky way uh, image i'll show one last one yeah so this is again from the around mukteshwar region only i think so you can see himalayas you can also see the star trails and of course you can also see the light pollution okay over here so uh, we'll be tallying up the results of this competition and we'll be announcing it uh, on our web page so uh, with this i thank you all for joining us making this celebration the grand celebration and week long celebration of national science day a uh, huge success to conclude i would request my senior colleague uh, and the chairman of our public outreach program who basically oversees what we have been doing okay so sir yeah. thank you virendra so uh, i think uh, it was overall a very successful program with uh, you know with very good participation from all of you and uh, every year we celebrate uh, this program and apart from that as our, our director said in the morning that uh, occasionally uh, we conduct a lot of other programs uh, connected with many astronomical activities like eclipses and so on and soon we are planning to announce it in well in advance to our website although it is known that when the eclipse will happen not only aries can tell but many other media and all the groups also tells so schools present here with, and uh, online participants and to schools and colleges in general here in the local vicinity uh we on behalf of aries would like to encourage them uh, you know to participate in such activities more and more and uh, as you can see that uh, these kind of open forums provide uh, an opportunity to students which they otherwise cannot avail or it is not that common so uh, it it was very good to see all of you here on this occasion of uh, a week long program here at aries Uh, the national science day week and the theme which we discussed in the morning and around that theme and uh, uh, i hope it was quite a learning week for you all or a day whose came just today uh, uh, with these uh, remarks uh, i would again uh, congratulate those who have been you know in the list of winners but those who were not winners Uh, are also congratulated and encouraged that they participated and uh, this is the forum from there onwards i mean uh, there is no hesitation and here they it's not that you are going to get zero marks and you will be disqualified from appearing your final year in intermediate examinations it is just a forum you know for you to learn and so i mean don't get disappointed you just try to improve a part and consider this forum as you know as your home i would say like in in home if let us say 
Uh, there are four rasgullas in uh, in the freeze, and if you eat all of them, then your parents may say, "Kya khaliya? Kaise khaliya? Ya, ya, aisa nahi karna, aisa nahi." Like ultimately, they are not going to you know harm you. So it's like that. So take it in that spirit. And uh, with these uh, remarks, uh, I would again uh, extend my thanks to all the organizers, Dr. Virendra and his team behind. You can imagine the kind of efforts which he has put. Uh, a big team is there. So let us clap for all of them. I am again uh, very much thankful to to the principals and teachers of various colleges and the schools who have been kind enough to come here. Uh, in this pandemic time to make this program a grand success. Thank you very much and see you next time. Any questions and queries regarding astronomy and atmospheric science and the kind of subject area where we research and we do our work. There's a public outreach email and uh, phone numbers and uh, contact details. Uh, don't hesitate to contact us anytime. And with the given opportunity and pandemic ends up, we will have our regular night sky watching program. So I would also encourage you all to just book in advance and come and visit us. Thank you very much. So as for already said that uh, till we meet uh, again, but it not it it's not necessary that it will be you know only the next science day. In fact, we would hope that we could meet much more frequently. If not here, then we could even come to your school. And if possible, that if the pandemic situation remains under control, and if we have a decent sky, probably we'll even come down with a telescope to your school. So I would particularly request the teachers that if it if it it's possible for you all, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be more than happy to accommodate such kind of requests. And we hope that this interaction continues either here or in online mode or with us coming to your school. Okay. So, yeah. Thank Let's you for coming for again.
ये तो अभी चल रही थी क्या ये वाली वो चलेगी वहीं से जैसे ऑन करो वहीं जाके थोड़ा दूर अभी आन दी दूर हो जा रहा होगा क्या करना ये भी ये फोन में है ना ये ये वाला नहीं वो वाला चलेगा उधर वाला देखो वो वाला चलेगा हां क्या बोल रहे हो वो चल रहा है वो वाला ना आवाज कर रहा है चल रहा है और कर रहा है हां क्या बात है अरे ये ये वाला फिटिंग नहीं कर रहा है फिटिंग नहीं कर रहा है नहीं देख कूलिंग कर रहा है बढ़िया ऐसे ही लग रहा है पूरा आप देख लो देख लो हम ये है कि पूरा हां ये ये कर रहा है लेकिन ये बहुत शोर कर रहा है कुछ भी इसे बंद कर देते हैं क्योंकि आवाज है बहुत शोर हो रहा है कनेक्टिविटी 